the most profound words ever spoken. A question that hangs in time and space before us. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the film The Tree of Life, Mrs. O'Brien attempts to reconcile personal grief over the death of her 19-year-old son with her belief in God's mercy and grace. Her minister offers words of consolation by assuring her that her son is now in God's hands. To which Mrs. O'Brien replies, He was in God's hands the whole time, wasn't he? If God is good and cares about us, why does he make us suffer? Man's greatest paradox is expressed most clearly in the book of Job. Of all writings in the Bible, none is more thorough in the discussing the aspects of human suffering. Universally accepted as a literary masterpiece, it represents the great struggle of all who tread the spiritual path. Life will, be it by nature or grace, bring you down on your knees and take you on a journey back to your roots. Terence Malick set the foundation of the movie with the opening quotation from the book of Job. To briefly summarize the story of Job, it begins with a meeting between God and Satan. God comments that Job is a perfect man, fearing God and avoiding evil. Satan replies that Job is well behaved because he's so richly blessed with family and wealth, to which God then consents to let Satan test Job. As Job endures his enormous grief without cursing God, despite encouragement from his friends and wife to do so, his greatest conflict arose when he questioned why, considering his misfortunes were the product of some cause. Many times we doubt and question God, crying, Lord, why, or where are, were you? Thinking that he makes us suffer as punishment for something we have done. Surprisingly, God doesn't reveal the reason for Job's suffering, but instead asks him a series of questions, beginning with, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you have understanding. Part of the problem in suffering is created by our frame of reference. We aren't capable of fully comprehending the reasons for suffering in this life, because we don't know what transpired before the creation, what will happen afterward, or the complexities involved in the plan to bring about our eventual destiny. Malik's answer to that question was taking us through the history of the universe and demonstrating how insignificantly small we are in comparison to it. Yet despite it all, we form part of the whole universe. The Tree of Life also displays the importance of love and forgiveness in its debate between grace and nature. Mr. O'Brien exemplifies the futility of nature, which only tries to please itself while Mrs. O'Brien seems selfless and shows loving acceptance of those around her. Nature has no choice but to do what is natural, just as the bud surrenders to its own internal code to bloom. While we can't control what happens to us or to those we love, we do have control over our responses and reactions. Our authentic power resides in our ability to choose. Choose wisely.